wow, this Ultra Print 12K has simultaneously caused me the most grief out of any printer I have ever owned, while also being really a fairly pleasant experience to use. And that is because the Ultra Print 12K quite literally exploded in this studio right here, and thank goodness that it didn't cause a fire. But it's been a really pleasant experience because besides that, this just is a beautiful printer and the results that come off of it are just stunning. And one thing that I love is that Ultraprint is pushing the bounds of technology by implementing a curing station directly into the machine, although it is weird to see that they just left out washing entirely. Anyway, guys, buckle up because this is going to be a wild ride. So before I get too involved, I definitely want to mention that besides the fact that this printer did actually, yes, explode in the studio, it really honestly has been a wonderful experience. Now they did deliver me a very prototype unit and of course with it being a prototype you can expect things to change and if you go and check out Ultraprint's Facebook page you can see very clearly that there are differences in the model that they're video recording on Facebook versus the model that I have here. So they are using the Kickstarter platform appropriately. Hopefully all of the gripes that I have with this machine are because it's a prototype unit and all of those issues will be flushed out when the retail version is shipped out. Now from an innovative standpoint, this machine does ship with a heated chamber, the built-in curing station, it has the resin pump and recall system, and it has this nice touch display running this beautiful new looking user interface. Unfortunately though, for me, I feel like a lot of the features on the Ultraprint 12K kind of feel thrown together and only kind of half-baked. However, that doesn't mean the features function poorly. I think Ultraprint is really just trying to cram in so many nice premium features into a $729 package that a lot of these features just can't be well tested and well flushed out. That being said, most of the features on the Ultraprint 12K do function properly and having them all in one single package is really amazing to see. You just need to realize that you're not going to be getting a Rolls Royce here. Rather, you're getting more of a premium luxury touring sedan. You have all the features, but it's not a premium version of it. And there is a market for that, so don't take that statement as a negative comment. So let's first start with the heated chamber. And I wanna reiterate that it is a heated chamber. And the reason that I wanna repeat that and make it known is because of all of the heating options that currently exist on the market, a heated chamber is probably the least desirable. Now, I would definitely rather have a heated chamber over nothing, however, the most preferred method Method would be to have a heated resin vat like the new Apex Maker, although that is a very premium and expensive option. After that, the next best thing would probably be to take a hint from uniformation and heat the chamber from beneath the resin vat so that the resin heats up first, although clearly uniformation chose to go the route of the heated chamber with two heated vents at the top of the machine. So the reason having those heater vents and a heated chamber is not the most optimal is because if you have a really tall print and your print then gets in front of the heater vents itself, you could have warped prints or even discolored prints. And that's because the heated vent itself is pumping air directly onto the model itself. And of course, that heat directly onto a not fully cured model is going to cause harm and do damage to the model itself. But the good news in all of this is that will only present an issue to you if you're printing very tall models because the heated vent is about this high up on the printer and not every print is going to be that tall. Additionally, when going the heated chamber route, in order to bring your resin up to temp, you're going to have to preheat the machine for a significantly longer amount of time. So if you're printing in a cold environment like a garage in the winter, you're going to want to close the lid and start preheating the chamber probably 10 or 15 minutes before before you even begin to print. And one final point to touch on with this heated chamber is that it is controlled via a control panel on the very back of the machine. It is not controlled 
via the screen interface here. And the back machine is a very difficult, very hard to access control area, and it's just not ideal. So for the integrated resin pump and recall system, this is something that a lot of people have been increasingly more excited about as more and more printers have been integrating them. The Ultraprint 12K sits happily between the Hallet Mage Pro and the Apex Maker X1. With its flip down spout, it has three seemingly out of place, colorful, and unlabeled buttons. One of those buttons pumps resin, one of those buttons recalls resin, and one of those buttons stops the current action. The actual pumping and recalling itself works very well. There's not much to say. It's about the speed as any other pump or recall system, which is to say it's quite slow. However, it's a very, very nice feature to have. I would rather pump resin slowly than pour resin and spill it out myself. What doesn't work well, though, is the connection method of the pump system to a bottle of resin because it does not seal shut. So if the bottle falls over, the resin is going to spill everywhere. And in my personal use with all of these resin pump recall systems, the hose that sits in the bottle that's connected to the printer is going to be pushing and pulling the bottle everywhere as you push and pull and twist on the printer itself. So there is a very real possibility that that bottle will spill and resin will go everywhere. So having a curing station built into the 12K is really great for beginners, but the problem is a curing station does you no good without a wash station. So naturally you're gonna go and you're gonna purchase a wash station, but it's gonna be a combination wash and cure station, which then means the cure station that comes built into this is now useless. That being said, it is designed quite well and it does work quite well and it will even work better on the retail units because if you check out the Facebook page, Ultraprint have redesigned that component from the one that I have and there are UV lights in the actual turntable itself. Having those UV lights in the actual turntable itself make it a significantly better cure station than any cure station that I've known on the market today because typically the bottom of models doesn't get cured very well. Even knowing that, I don't know if I would personally go to the effort to set this machine up as a cure station because it is a little tedious to do it. The other issue with the cure station that is built into the Ultraprint 12K is that there's no way to do a timed cure. So basically it's either on or it's off. And if you turn it on and then you walk away and forget about it, well, you could very easily over cure your models. So it's time to move onto the screen and the user interface of this machine. And despite the fact that it is a little bit laggy from time to time, it is a very great experience to use. What's a little peculiar is that this is the exact same firmware that comes on the Apex Maker and that probably is gonna open the door to quite a few questions. However, it is exceptionally easy to navigate, it's feature rich, and it offers a very, very large amount of customization. So you can copy files from a USB to the internal storage or vice versa. You can check and save error logs. You can customize what happens with the printer when you stop, start, or pause a print. And there's a lot more that you can do within this firmware. It just takes time to scroll through and dig and find out all the possible features. I can confidently say that this is the best firmware that you will get on any resin printer on the market today. During my time printing with this machine, I sent two files over Wi-Fi and both of them became corrupt and failed the print. The printer even does a pre-check prior to printing and that pre-check for some reason didn't even notice the corruption within the files. 30 minutes into printing both files, the printer started giving some very odd beeping sounds and provided a very, very ambiguous error message that actually made no sense. As much as I love having Wi-Fi on a resin printer, I definitely would not trust the Wi-Fi on the Ultraprint 12K, though I will say that this could be a firmware issue and by the time that the retailers or the backers from Kickstarter get this machine, the firmware could be fixed and there might not be any issues with it whatsoever. Now, I only printed with the Ultra Print Fast Resin and the Ultra Print High Precision Resin, but with both resins, I printed at 0.1 millimeters and 0.05 millimeter layers, and it performed very well in both cases. For those prints, I used the included material profiles and all of the prints were fast, had very high, very fine detail, 
and despite the Wi-Fi issue, no prints failed whatsoever, and all of my build plate adhesion was perfectly stellar. I know a lot of people are gonna hate me for this, but I used Chitterbox with auto-generated medium supports on every model I printed, and every single support removed very easily, and there's only minimum scarring done to the model that could be easily removed in post-processing. So overall, I had an exceptionally good experience while printing with this machine, However, it would be unfair of me to you to leave out the elephant in the room, which is the fact that this thing exploded in my studio. I have another video dedicated to that topic, but let me warn you, it is going to be a little monotonous and a little boring, though I do highly recommend you check it out, and that video is gonna be linked here. If you don't wanna watch it, the bluff is that I was very, very hard on the Ultra Print team, and I told them I absolutely could not recommend this printer to anyone if they can't show me and prove to me that they have fixed the issues and the reason why this machine exploded in my house. So I am personally confident in their resolution, but I really would highly recommend you go and check that video out. I'm sharing emails, of course, with things blurred out that you shouldn't see. However, I am sharing emails and all of the details that you need to know so you can come up with a full idea for yourself. So while I am confident in their resolution, if you are intending on purchasing or backing this machine, I highly recommend you check that video out because I am sharing screenshots and these are things with raw, unfiltered information for you to go make your own decision on the matter. So yeah, I think this printer is great. I think it comes jam-packed with a ton of features that a lot of people want, and I think the price is a very competitive one at that. If you're looking for a fully refined user experience, I think you're probably gonna wanna look elsewhere. However, you're also probably gonna up your budget to well over a thousand dollars. If you simply want all the features that the market has to offer at the lowest price point that you can get it, then this is definitely going to be the machine that you want to be focusing on heavily right now. So go to the comments down below and tell me if you're going to be backing this thing, you're going to be waiting for the Kickstarter to end, and you're going to be buying it at full retail price. Let me know in the comment section down below. And guys, this one was a very, very hard one for me from the testing to the debugging to the repairing, the fact that I'm recording this video right now and I'm all sick. It was very hard. If you really did enjoy this video, please go and give the video some love. Click the like button and while you're down there, give me a subscribe while you're at it. Guys, thank you for sticking around to the end of the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.